Welcome to the Snowbird Investor Way, where we explore what it takes to create your dream cross-border lifestyle, living and investing amongst the sun, sand, and palm trees of Florida, even if you're not a U.S. citizen or permanent resident. I'm your host, Coach Rowell. Louis Ayuanu, am I pronouncing that correctly, my friend? It's good, Ayanu. It's very close. It's a difficult, difficult last Louis- name. Louis Ayanu from Canada, eh? Uh, you are a builder extraordinaire, focusing more on commercial stuff now. You've been building for what, 15? Over 15 plus years now? Over 24 now. Over 24 years. You also yeah. do some investing, some yes. real estate investing. And you just uh, held or helped to organize. I don't know. If, I forget if you're the the lead, but you had a, a conference called the Unnamed Conference, which was a success earlier, um, at least compared to the time of this recording. So congratulations on that. And now you're expanding internationally, and you have your sights set on including Florida into your lifestyle, into your business. So to kick ourselves off here, what? about Florida draws you to it? Anything that comes to mind? What, what's the allure of Florida to you? Other than the sunshine, I would have to say that the general lifestyle and opportunity that I see in that state, um, both, both for lifestyle, but business sense as well. You know, being self-employed and entrepreneur, I see an abundance of opportunity down there for a lot of people. And we want, we want to be there and we want to expose ourselves to those opportunities. Let's start getting into a deep right away like what are what are some of the stats or what are the things that pop out most uh, i'm really interested in your perspective because you're not only an investor but you're a builder you've been in construction like at a you're not just a handyman like you're up there like you do this and you've yep. you've run a, a huge conference which uh, will hopefully just grow year after year but what from a business person's point of view attracts you to florida let's get in some nitty-gritty I would first, uh, I cannot gloss over the fact that, uh, you know, environment is so important to, should be important to all of us. And for my wife and I, being in an area that is inspiring, that has a ton of, you know, decent weather to say the least, good sunshine, um, a lot of people that are of the, the same mindset and moving forward with a lot of cool things. I think Florida is ground zero for that in the U.S. Um, so, you know, being in an environment that is fostering the type of things we like to see is number one. Taking it from there, being in the construction field and focusing on more industrial, there's a ton of work going on in multiple areas in Florida, um, Lakeland area, Ocala, just outside of the Orlando area. Um, as well as the Miami-Dade County area, both north and south of of that uh, metropolis, are just really growing at fantastic rates, not only for uh, residents and work, but the the necessity for these other logistical facilities and industrial complexes that uh, people need to either uh, store or warehouse goods, electronics and everything else we consume. And Florida is one of those major hubs because of where it's situated for um, a lot of importing and exporting. So the type of work I'm doing, um, it's right for the picking in that area. Mm-hmm. Well, give me a bit of context. Where are you located in Canada? And tell, tell me a bit about like your backstory and how you got to this point. So right now in Toronto, it's always been within the GTA area. Um, this particular business we started in 2013, focusing on more residential construction because it was, it was a great segue and I've had a lot of both commercial and, and residential experience up, up t- till that point. And I just continue to grow the business and found a lot of other opportunities, better opportunities in the industrial and commercial space for work. And that kind of changes the profile of client you're dealing with as well to in most cases, somewhat of a professional that understands the contracts and schedules and how things work when you're looking to complete renovations or new builds. So that just enticed me a lot more dealing with someone that is reciprocating the type of uh, negotiating I want to be doing. And not always, but most of the time, respecting the fact that things aren't going to be done, you know, in two weeks, it doesn't happen like that. There's schedules and procurement that has to happen. And that just drove me 
uh, and attracted me more to the industrial space. So that's what we've been focusing on for the last five to seven years. Um, we, we specialize in a lot of food and beverage facilities where they manufacture consumer goods. It's uh, in the GTA area in Southern Ontario. Um, you can imagine with the 401 going east and west through different areas of the city and reaching other corridors internationally as well with the states, there's a lot of goods that are being moved and there's a ton of uh, facilities in the GTA area that are producing things. So we're finding ourselves growing very nicely serving these, these clients. And, you know, some of these clients are international as well. So that has kind of lent itself to looking um, down south across the border into the state of Florida because there's the same type of activity happening there. I dare I say growing at, uh, at a greater pace than the GTA area. So that's kind of in a nutshell where things have progressed over the last 13 years from a business perspective. I, I agree with Florida just because I don't know if you remember, but when we were talking before, it's um, I've been down here. We re relocated about six years ago now. Our, our first big business trip was just over six years ago. And the growth is just amazing here. It's I grew up yeah. in Scarborough like from the 70s, believe it or not. And uh, and I remember the neighborhoods at the time. It was all like farmland Farm, and yeah. empty space. And I can't help but but draw a parallel, Lewis, as a lot of places in Florida very much feel like Scarborough Markham from like the 80s, where yes. you see a lot of pasture. Actually, in the city proper, you still see a lot of empty space where, fun fact, if you put cows and graze, grazing on there, you lower your property taxes. So in the yeah. middle of the city, you'll still see huge tracts of land in Orlando proper, uh, at least, with cows grazing right beside a, yeah. a subdevelopment uh, or a subdivision development. For you though, Lewis, when did it transition from a, you know, a place that you could just vacation in Florida? You know, people like to go down for cruises or go down for Disney or, or check out the beaches and stuff. When did it hit you to have, I dare I say, the audacity to think that you could actually do business or even relocate some family members down here? It, I have to be honest, it's always been on my mind since has it definitely since I was a teenager. And what has um, driven that sense of exploration for me, without a doubt has to be uh, the migration of my grandparents from Europe to North America, the Toronto area in the 50s and 60s. And yeah. why that's important to me is because they, uh, they made a very important decision in their lives. And that has transpired into uh, multiple generations being able to thrive and find success in the Ontario marketplace and raise families and start businesses and have great careers. When I reflect on that, I can't help but think of patterns that I need to identify in my lifetime to find great success as well. Flor internationally, Florida is one of those markets that Although there's a lot of people there, a lot of stuff going on, I feel it has a tremendous opportunity to continue to grow for many decades and generations to come. And I want to be there for not only the business, but like I mentioned previously, lifestyle, family. If it's not full time, it's definitely going to be a substantial chunk of the time because it's, uh, there are things happening there that if I can't take advantage of fully, maybe the next generation can. And I think... For me, thinking of who's coming after me is one of the most important things. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh, that's awesome. I feel like we're in a bit of an echo chamber because I'm right there, right there with you. But uh, I, I want to know what areas do you find the most interesting and why? Like you were talking about a little bit about your brother uh, potentially relocating to the Lakeland area. I know it very well. And Miami, my gosh, you know, it's one thing to see it in the movies and on television shows, but it's a whole other thing to experience it, especially these days. So feel free, open up, gush about it. What, what's so cool about it? Even if it's not just purely for dollars and cents and financially, like lifestyle, how many parts is it for you? Lifestyle, how many parts is it business? You know, give me the whole thing. Yeah. And, you know, uh, like I said, I don't want to keep dwelling on it. The business is great. But for me, it started long before that. It's just when I'm there, I feel different. I, I feel better. I feel at home. 
Um, I, I don't really think I can put it into words, but it's just uh, more of a genuine energy that I have when I'm anywhere in the state of Florida, really. And like I said, I do gravitate to the Miami area for some reason. Um, maybe because I'm going from city to city, I just like the action and the fast paced activity, which, um, which I really do enjoy. But other areas outside of Miami, we have spent a little bit of time in Orlando and do have some family in that area. And I know Orlando is growing very quickly as well. Um, you know, with people coming in, uh, a lot of job opportunities there. So Orlando is a great area to frequent. And like you mentioned, the Lakeland area between Orlando and Tampa Bay. Um, I have not personally been there yet, but we've been doing some research on it and we like what we see there. It's kind of the middle between two metropolises, um, an area that is growing, uh, affordable for a lot of folks and a relatively easy commute, whether you're headed towards the Orlando or Tampa um, region. So uh, outside of that, I've spent a little bit of time in the Ocala area north of Orlando, which is one area that we're focusing on uh, predominantly for business because there's a lot of industrial and warehousing happening in that place because it's a great corridor to um, uh, to Georgia and other northern states. So yeah, those are a couple of spots where we're really keen on. Um, we usually gravitate towards the East Coast for some reason. Everywhere uh, between you know Cape Canaveral, going down to um, Hollywood, uh, Lauderdale, Miami area is just there's. So much beauty to see down there and it uh it's very exciting whenever we're there but also the the ease of opportunity i think because there's so much of it there um the taxation and different structures like that are just easier to kind of live even if you don't have these crazy aspirations to do all this wild stuff everybody's different but at least in florida i feel like um much more people have an opportunity whether you're going down to retire and and don't want the expenses of uh, like an Ontario market, um, or if you're going down there to start business, it's it's uh, it offers uh, a little bit of leeway. You still have to do things to you know conform and um, uh, maintain regulation, but I find it um, exciting and great opportunity for for more folks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure, uh, a couple of things I'd love to comment on Lakeland. If ever you get a chance to to drive that, even just off of the I-4, it's kind of like the 401 highway that connects uh, many different hubs along the way. The I-4 kind of goes diagonal between Orlando and Tampa and Lakeland right in the middle. Just okay. off the highway, you could see like these warehouses right, right beside the highway that are probably mm -hmm. two to three, maybe even more football fields in length, like these massive, massive uh, distribution hubs like city furniture is a huge one there. They've got a right off the highway. You can see a couple of Amazon warehouses right there. And, uh, those are, those are blue collar jobs that they're bringing there. Just yeah. uh, really great for a rental market as a hub. Ocala is famous for, uh, the villages. It's like, um, heaven's waiting room. <laughs> it's, uh, a lot of retirees there, uh, master plan community being the, the villages and, um, even with Cape Canaveral, uh, all the way down, starting with yeah. Cape Canaveral, Titusville, that's where SpaceX launches and, uh, you know, NASA is stationed there. So there's, there's a lot of, uh, highly skilled knowledge workers that are in that area. Uh, and it's, it's the, the whole lifestyle, as you were saying, it's beautiful down, but yes. for you, how would, how do you, it's interesting. Yeah. I caught at some a comment you'd mentioned that you feel like you're a different person when you're down here. I've actually heard that from many people, probably over a dozen people who've said something very similar. They say, I'm just different. Is that just because of the sun and the, and the weather, or is there something more to it from your perspective? I have a feeling it, it has to do with uh, being closer to great bodies of water too, and just being in a climate that has uh, outside of the, the, the human population, such an abundance of life. And I think that's really important and something that we don't pay enough attention to is, you know, our environment and, and being in spaces that can really improve our moods, our, our mental health, and just genuinely make us feel better. And I, I believe Florida has had that kind of sentiment with a lot of people for a long time. 
Um, and I'm just happy that I'm able to embrace it every time I'm there. So I, it definitely has to do with the environment. And I've heard from a lot of people too, when they're down in Florida for a week, you know, if the, even if it's the first time they've been there, they say, people are a lot nicer down there. You can smile and say hello. Like that's, un, you know, unfortunately, it's, I'm starting to see that too. It's not always the case, but, you know, in Toronto. It's a funny surprise, especially downtown, coming yeah. from Canada. Being thinking, downtown we're su- Toronto. We're, we're supposed to be the nicest people in the world, but well, then we come down to Florida. Well, at least that's the positive stereotype of Canadians, right? That That's it. So, I mean, it's a pleasant surprise, but yeah, like you said, you're, we're supposed to be so nice, but Florida has uh, has a lot going for it. I think I think a lot of it has to do with the climate. Like it's yeah. uh, in the beginning or earlier years, I was trying to think, well, what, what's underneath the layers? Like, why is this? And I think it's just a very simple answer. I think, well, at least for me, I know that when you wake up and you see the sun shining every single day for a few days in a row, it's like, what gives? I need to get out there, right? Like yeah. I was never really an outdoorsy person in Toronto. And maybe it's just a function because there's like two nice weeks in spring for weather to get out and two nice weeks in the fall as it changes. But then all of a sudden it goes to super gloomy and cloudy in the winter or super hot and humid in the summer. But in Florida, there's a lot longer of a stretch where there's really nice weather that it just kind of almost positively wears you down. And you're like, I have to get out there. I got to get on a bike. I got to at least just go for a walk or, or heck I'll drive to an ocean uh, less than hour, an hour away. Right. Um, But for you, is that, how does that factor in? Is it, is that part of the fun of doing business? Like what, what was the chicken or the egg? Was it first, you know, I got to go down to Florida for, for the environment, or is it, I got to go down to Florida for the business opportunities? Was it one or the other first? I would have to say that, uh, the lifestyle might have a, a leading edge over business because like, if I'm happy and enjoying myself, I'm going to perform that much better, right? Yes. And alongside, you know, you know, Michelle, my wife as well. Um, so you have to take care of yourself, like I said, and it's so important. Environment is such a big uh, component to that. And if you're putting yourself in an area like that, that is uh, uh, conducive to, you know, making you thrive, then the business is going to have that much more success, I feel. So that's kind of how I'm equating it. Uh, you know, not to put business second, like I said, there's a ton of uh, opportunity down there, but being in a place that you genuinely love and look forward to and are excited to wake up every morning and see that sunset and, and the, the people and, and life and nature around you, how can you lose? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so specifically, what's your uh, plan with, um, with breaking into or expanding into the, the, the market? Like, is it going to be you're going to um, set up a business and an extension of your current business. Are you going to get a rental property first? Like, give me an idea of, uh, and as I was mentioning to you, that one of the benefits of why I love doing this is to give listeners and viewers just at least a sneak peek as to how other people are doing it. Because there's more than yes. one way to be able to include all the benefits of the Florida business climate as well as the uh, the weather climate into your life. So. Yes. Wait, what's going to be your immediate plan for this year? We are, are slowly taking steps towards opening a subsidiary of our business in the state of Florida. Mm-hmm. Um, we'll be able, from what we understand, we'll be able to bring a director down there, um, down to Florida from the province of Ontario to work. Um, there'll be some hiring required as well. And we're looking to break into that market in the industrial space as well. We're kind of meeting some people, networking and making some connections before that happens. So we have some type of pipeline or work or some leads beforehand. So we're at least hitting the ground running with some activity. Um, so that's what we're thinking business wise. And so far it looks good. Um, we're, we're looking to keep obviously things separated and not really um, have no plans to repatriate any of the funds either. We Whatever is generated in Florida, we want to be able to keep it down there and continue to grow business and thrive. Property wise, we have not gone that far yet. If uh, if rented renting is needed, we can do that. But ideally, to find something small and just start off with a little home base, something we can pick up and 
uh, possibly renovate and force some appreciation into. Um, that would be the ideal start to get down there and set up, let the dust settle. And then after you know, the first six, 12 months, we're comfortable and, and continue to build the business and grow. So just in case, you never know who might listen to uh, this podcast episode or watch this on YouTube, is um, what kind of partners are you looking for? Like, or, or even potential clients? Like you, you, I'm assuming you're, the business you're talking about expanding is your industrial, uh, commercial and construction business? It is. So the type of clients we work with in the Ontario marketplace that we're looking to find in the Florida marketplace include folks that have some type of logistic or warehousing space, uh, food or beverage facilities where they're producing consumer goods like confectionery, uh, even poultry, meat, meat plants, um, coffee, uh, juice plants, things of that nature. So if there's any production happening, those are the type of plants that we're working in and we're looking to break into that market in the Florida region. Mm hmm. OK, great. Actually, there was a gentleman. I did not I did not uh, interview him on the podcast, but I did speak with him. He was from Canada and he was looking to actually there's a couple people uh, after the recording. I've got to uh, try to pass you off their contacts. But that's what I love about this is like there's a common interest, which is mostly Canadians that are uh, looking to have more Florida in their life. And from yeah. a business or investors point of view. Uh, one gentleman I know, he said he's looking to actually open up a restaurant business in Miami. Now that I remember, uh, I think his first name was Brandon. So I'll remember for myself as well. But uh, yeah, what um, beyond that wish list, is there uh, anything else that uh, actually on the Canadian side as well? Could you also reiterate what it is uh, that your business is best suited for servicing people in Canada? In the Canadian marketplace, we're working with, um, you know, different brands that are producing consumer goods like uh, soft drinks, uh, juices, coffee, uh, different retail goods for, uh, you know, Tim Hortons and Wendy's, that type of thing. So some some bigger plants, but again, food and beverage facilities that are producing consumer goods in the GTA area, uh, confectionaries, baked goods, things of that nature. Mm hmm. Excellent. And so then let's fast forward, say, maybe three years. Imagine we fast forward and you've done it. Like, what does that look like? What would be your ideal balance of lifestyle? Like, are you um, relocating altogether, 80% down in Florida, coming back 20%? Are you doing 50-50, cross, crisscrossing the border? How, how would that look like for you, ideally? Ideally, I think a mix of 50 50 would be reasonable you know we have a great team in ontario that we're growing um, we have a great future here but definitely don't want to miss the opportunity in the florida marketplace so i'm currently operating the business with one partner that joined approximately 14 months ago i'll have another business partner joining in two to three years time so between the three of us we'll be able to manage both offices in uh you know the one province and the one state and continue to grow both that would be ideal and, and what we're striving for currently. Mm -hmm. And if anybody has uh, resonated with anything that you've said here and says, hey, I, I, this Lewis guy sounds interesting and I think we might actually be able to uh, work with each other somehow, how would you like people to reach out to you? How can they find you? Do you have a website or LinkedIn? You know what? LinkedIn would probably be fantastic at Louis Ionu, at L-O-U-I-S-I-O-A-N-N-O-U. And the business name is JDL Builders. So that's how folks can find me, JDL Builders. Wonderful. Okay, well, thanks again for your time and sharing your insights there and your wonderful vision, Louis. I'm sure it's not the last time we'll speak to you. I hope not. Thanks, Roel. Appreciate it.